All right. Um, so uh, thanks again for this opportunity uh, to present on our project. And so since the last uh, roundtable, the Rarius team has undergone a staffing change. And so I have joined the project. Janine, my name is Janine Murphy as the faculty researcher. And Malin, who will be co-presenting with me today, is the policy planning and research analyst. And so today we want to present an overview of our research project which is short title, The Readiness Project, um, and it's Alternative Emissions, Academic Readiness, Assessment Processes and Tools for Indigenous Peoples, um, and it will continue into March 2023. So I'm going to pass this over to Malin now, and she's going to take you through our research goals and questions. Right. So hello, everyone. I'm Malin Instagram. So I'm just going to go over the project overview, overview for The Readiness Project. Thank you. Um, next slide, please. Is that no, I'm right. I'm right. I'm a slide two, right, Janine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So after um, hearing, uh, we heard that the old mature student admission process uh, at the College North Atlantic uh, called CAT was not viewed as appropriate for Indigenous applicants. So CNA secured funding from NLWIC for a three year project to develop a new mature Indigenous uh, student admission model. And our research is guided by the question of how what best practices uh, in our alternate admission processes could guide uh, College of North Atlantic in its implementation of pathways and tools for mature Indigenous students that are reliable, valid, cultural sensitive and appropriate. Next slide, please. So our project goals include collaboration, uh, co it's a co-decision uh, making process, developing and piloting a holistic admission model and concluding the project, project with uh, recommendations uh, uh, to the uh, College of North Atlantic. Next slide, please. So to date, we have developed a holistic placement model uh, rather than simply an admission model. Uh, and this model will be piloted for Indigenous mature student admissions, uh, that is, for those who do not meet the entrance requirements for <clears throat> into a full-time program, but who are at least 19 years of age at the time of submitting an application and who have been out of school for at least one year. So this consists of three steps. Uh, it is uh, discussion, document review and the co-development of an education plan. And I'm going to just explain this quickly a little bit further. So step one compromises the discussion between the applicant and the CNA counselor. So the goal is to guide the applicant in preparing informal and formal documents for document review. And in step two, this entails the admissions team reviewing these documents to assess whether the applicant is ready for program admission. So if there are questions about readiness, the applicant will complete a placement assessment, which is what we call step 2A, the placement assessment, which will help to identify the applicant's strengths and weaknesses and to establish pathways into education for the applicant. Step three, the education plan, it, it concludes with the co-creation of the education pathway and plan. And if the applicant has demonstrated program readiness, the applicant will be admitted to their program of choice. So if the applicant requires an altern alternative pathway to admissions, the admissions team will process, uh, will discuss, sorry, possible pathways with the applicant. For example, upgrading, the completion of prerequisite courses, uh, provincial admission, et cetera. And also will create an alternative alternate pathway into admission and an education plan together. Next slide, please, Janine. All right. Um, so throughout this process, we identified two opportunities. And so while it came, what we what we heard and, and the objections to the process and the criticism of the process came from Indigenous communities, we also recognized that for the larger mature student uh, population, that changing this process would be a much better way of going about admissions to the college. And so we wanted to move from an assessment to placement. That's the first opportunity that we looked at. And we wanted to look holistically rather than at a single category of being ready 
or not. And so in designing this model, we move the emphasis away from emissions and to placement. And so here we're drawing on recent research on college readiness, which underscores that readiness is different for each individual and that success can only be defined by an individual themselves. So this moves us beyond merely meeting. So someone having to meet some standardized measures based on stringent criteria that often doesn't reflect the real demands of post-secondary education. And so in this lens, applied learning, study skills, and contextual knowledge, that is knowledge about the realities of post-secondary education, are seen as being as important as content knowledge. Um, and the templates for the study guide, so we provide applicants, we will provide applicants with a study guide before they have to complete the assessment, complement this holistic lens. And so rather than a single online test, the study guide and the assessment are complementary. And so this is why we've classified it as step two. So it informs placement, but it's not the sole determinant of admissions. So we want to be able to create these sort of pathways in that way. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, and so just to, to conclude here with our second um, opportunity that we saw, and um, here we're kind of balancing between two aspects of the research. So on one hand, we want it to consider cultural safety and the four R's of Indigenous education. And so cultural safety refers to providing an environment where individuals feel welcome, safe, comfortable and free of discrimination. And so cultural safety can only be determined by the recipient of the survey. And that's why during the pilot phase, we have implemented a survey that we will get a sense of how it felt, whether or not, um, the if they had to do the assessment, if it was intimidated, if they felt prepared. And then our four R's, respect, responsibility, relevance, and reciprocity, it keeps the applicants at the center of the process. And so the entire process is designed to respect the knowledge and experience that mature applicants bring with them. It also aims to support applicants so that they can thrive and take responsibility for their own education. And this is driven by reciprocity, and this is really important, by building relationships between human beings rather than institutionalized relationships between an applicant and a decision-making body. And so to achieve this, we drew on, so on the left-hand side, um, Conley's four key assets, a uh, facet, sorry, of readiness, and that's your key cognitive strategies to so your competencies required to learn different content from a range of subject, key content knowledge, things that are important for academic subjects, such as math, reading and writing, academic behaviors, such as study skills, time management, taking notes, preparing for and writing exams, and contextual skills is, is knowledge about going to college so that you can understand and navigate the college system, its culture, and to adapt to the differences between <laughs> a student's new environment and the communities and the educational settings that they have left behind. And so these elements guide us towards relevance to ensure that the material is relatable to applicants and that they can see how their previous knowledge is related to the assessment um, and how it will be relevant for their post-secondary education as well as their future careers. So to try and bring all of that sort of together in a nutshell. And uh, yeah, that brings me to the end. Thanks for listening to our quick uh, presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And we look forward to any questions uh, during the discussion. Thanks. <laughs>